When freedom is outlawed, only the outlaws will be free. I think I have a defendant's final motion that I'd like to enter. So in the Justice Court of Lafayette County, Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, First Matthew Reardon, cause number 9289668399290610 This is the defendant's final motion to dismiss Prior to judgment comes now the defendant, Matthew Reardon, by and through counsel, and moves this court to dismiss all complaints alleged and states the following in support of his motion. 1. A criminal conviction procured by the state prosecuting authorities through the use of perjured testimony knowingly used by them in order to procure the conviction is without due process and is in violation of the 14th Amendment. Mooney v. Hollihan, 294 U.S. 103. 2. The Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment governs any actions of the state through its legislature, its courts, or its executive officers, including action through its prosecuting officers. P. 294 U.S. 112. 3. In Brady v. Maryland, the court held that the suppression by the prosecution of evidence favorable to an accused upon request violates due process where the evidence is material to either guilt or to punishment, irrespective of the good faith or bad faith of the prosecution. A. The heart of the holding in Brady is the prosecution's suppression of evidence in the face of a defense production request where the evidence is favorable to the accused and the material either to guilt or to punishment. Important then are one, suppression by the prosecution after a request by the defense. Two, the evidence favorable character for the defense. And three, the materiality of the evidence. Youngblood v. West Virginia, 547 U.S. 867. 7. The state has the necessary burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt every fact necessary to constitute the crime charged. The state of Mississippi failed in proving every fact necessary to constitute the crime of DUI charged through the combined testimony of Deputy Beavers and Deputy Williford. A. Neither Deputy Beavers or Deputy Williford had a dash camera in their patrol car. B. Neither Deputy wore a body camera at that time. C. Deputy Williford testified to a headlight being out as the cause of the traffic stop. At trial, Deputy Williford testified to no sign of intoxication being the cause of the stop. D. Defendant verbally expressed his right and desire to speak with an attorney and verbalized that he did not give consent to transport off-site the Lafayette County Detention Center for testing. Deputy Beavers insisted on transporting the defendant away from the site of the traffic stop to the Lafayette County Detention Center for the purpose of conducting a field sobriety test in a secure environment. However, no video of the test being administered was ever preserved and retained according to Sheriff Joey East despite timely discovery requests by the defendant specifying the Sally Port camera in particular. C. When questioned at trial about defendant's request to speak with an attorney at the scene of the traffic stop, Deputy Beaver stated that the test was voluntary, though never stating that during the stop. She followed that statement up, saying the defendant was not entitled the right to confer with an attorney until after the standard field sobriety test was administered, which is a contradicting statement to the test being voluntary, but particular rights were already invoked. 
Thus, defendant would raise the constitutionality of such statement and actions by Deputy Beavers. 13. That requirement in safeguarding the liberty of the citizen against deprivation through the action of the state embodies the fundamental conceptions of justice, which lie at the base of our civil and political institutions. Mooney v. Olihan, 294 U.S. 103. 9. In the action of, pro of prosecuting officers on behalf of the state, those that set laws and enforce laws may constitute state action within the purview of the 14th Amendment. That amendment governs any action of the state, whether through its legislature, through its courts, or through its executive or administrative officers. Carter v. Texas, Rogers v. Alabama, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy v. Chicago. A. The principal and enunciated has required state officials to controvert allegations that knowingly false testimony had been used to convict and is upset convictions found to have been procured, extending the principle. B. The court in Miller v. Pate overturned a conviction obtained after the prosecution had represented to the jury that a pair of men's shorts found near the scene of a sex attack belonged to the defendant and they were and they were stained with blood. The defendant showed in a habeas corpus proceeding that no evidence connected him with the shorts and furthermore that the shorts were not in fact blood stained. C. In Nauvoo v. Texas, the principal prosecution witness was the defendant's accomplice who had testified that he had received no promise of consideration from the prosecution in return for his testimony. In fact, the prosecution had promised him consideration but did nothing to correct the false testimony. D. In Gaglio v. United States, a case involving a husband's killing of his wife because of her infidelity. A prosecution witness testified at the habeas corpus hearing that he told the prosecutor he had been intimate with the woman, but that the prosecutor told him to volunteer nothing of it. Due to this, at trial, he testified his relationship with the woman was wholly casual. E. In both cases, the court deemed it irrelevant that the false testimony had gone only to the credibility of the witness rather than to the defendant's guilt. 10. In each instance, time after time over the past 30 years, the Supreme Court has held that the 14th Amendment cannot tolerate a state criminal conviction obtained by the knowing use of false evidence. Mooney v. Hollihan. A. The Supreme Court has further elaborated in subsequent rulings that there has been no deviation from that established principle, and there can be no retreat from that principle here. Nauvoo v. Illinois, Ohio v. Kansas, Alcorta v. Texas. 11. Suppression by the prosecution of evidence favorable to the accused upon request violates due process where the evidence is material either to guilt or to punishment. Brady v. Maryland. A. The heart of the holding in Brady is the prosecution's suppression of evidence in the face of a defense production request, or when the evidence is favorable to the accused and is material either to guilt or to punishment. 12. If the prosecutor knew or should have known that testimony given to the trial was perjured, the conviction must be set aside. If there's any reasonable likelihood that the false testimony could have affected the judgment of the jury. 13. If the defense specifically requested certain evidence and the prosecution withheld it, the conviction must be set aside if the suppressed evidence might have affected the outcome of the trial. Brady v. Maryland. 14. If the defense did not make a request at all and simply asked for all Brady material or for anything exculpatory, a duty resides in the prosecution to reveal to the defense obvious exculpatory evidence. Furthermore, if the prosecutor did not reveal the relevant information, reversal of a conviction may be required. 
but only if the undisclosed evidence creates a reasonable doubt as to the defendant's guilt. U.S. v. Augers. 15. A state is not free to have no corrective process in which defendants may pursue remedy for federal constitutional violations. 16. A conviction obtained in a mob-dominated trial is contrary to due process if the state supplying no corrective process carries into execution a judgment based upon a verdict thus produced by mob domination. 17. The state deprives the accused of his life or liberty without due process of law or some form of corrective process when the convicted defendant alleges a federal constitutional violation contravenes the 14th Amendment. Mr. Reardon has asked me to make what is called an England Jimmy Reservation, um, which I had to look up, Your Honor. And it's basically, it's a reservation of a right to try issues that might involve federal questions or constitutional issues in a federal forum when that time arises. And I really have never heard of it, never raised it, but I looked at the law and it says that in order to evoke that right, if that right exists, if it applies here, you just have to make an announcement in the state court before the proceeding that uh, might affect that right later. So Mr. Reardon has asked me to make that reservation and uh, I hereby am invoking his English Jennings reservation. in Oxford, Mississippi. It's been an eventful day today. There are a bunch of college-age kids over on the south side, right in front of the Confederate statue, holding signs wanting to take the statue down. But not one of them could give a reason as to why. When I first got out here, they were standing right next to City Hall. They were actually the first group that I walked up to. As an independent journalist today, of course, it's not hard to know what side of the fence I stand on when it comes to the state flag. 